Good evening, everyone. It is Monday, July 18th, and um, this is Mayor. I'm covering covering for our beautiful Elizabeth. Um, This is the Diamonds Network show, and um, this is an amazing time. I'm so happy everybody could join us. Um, There is just so much change going on in the world and within each of us. And so I would like to start the call out by... um, saying a prayer and doing the law of one. So um, I would like to call in the living flame of divine love to be with us now and universal consciousness to be with us now and our own divine Christed selves to be with us now. And I just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, I want to thank all the support that we've all been receiving from the galactics, the angelic support, um, guides, helpers, teachers, just all the help that we're getting. And we just thank you so much. And uh, we're going to do the law of one. We are all one. And we I'm are all unmute, one. So everybody can unmute if you want to say it along with me. We are all one. We are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is harmed, when all one are harmed, harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. When one is helped, one all, is helped, are helped. all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is. And I am one with all there is. I ask that the highest good of all happen. I ask that the highest good of all happen. And I give thanks that this is done. And I give thanks that this is done. So be it and so it is. So be it and so it is. Yes, and we have a wonderful night planned. Um, Tomorrow it is the full moon, so we'll be discussing the current astrology, um, some of the current affairs going on. Um, We'll see if Candy is able to come on for the Candy Shop show. Um, We'll also hopefully do some galactalizing. We we love our galactic brothers and sisters. So, um, Candy, are you on by any chance? I don't hear Candy. She may still be doing her travels. So I'd like to bring Cynthia on. Um, I know we were looking earlier to see if the Benjamin Fulford report came out, but I don't think it came out today. Did it, Cynthia? No, and you know what? I knew it. I knew it. Okay. I mean, yeah. tomorrow is the full moon, right? I mean, everybody's on the edge of their seat waiting for the Fulford, right? Last Monday or Tuesday, I think it was, he put out a list of people. There is a a ton of gold, a ton of gold, 2,000 pounds of gold waiting for each of these people to be captured. And if they resist, uh, permission is given, you know, to use any means possible to uh, even to 007 type of drama. And... um, I just want to make a commentary. May I, Mayor, take this time since Candy isn't on? No, I don't believe Candy's on. Okay, I'm going to make a, a current events observation. Oh, please do. Please. Yeah. Okay. Considering that so many um, of the players, regardless of which side of the fence they're on, are how many sides of the different fences they may be on. A lot of them were deeply impressed with video games 
and movies and television and computer. In other words, visual images uh, that they looked at that went through their optic nerve. Now, here's the deal. And there's plenty of research on this, books, YouTube, you can find it. But visual images, whether you take them in from the outside or whether you create them in your imagination, are the language of the brain, not words. Um, There's German, Spanish, English, Portuguese, what have you. It's not the words that trigger the brain. It's the images associated with the words. So whether you are creating your little boy getting well from some disease in your imagination through faith and through prayer, or whether you are watching a video game, it can be any video game, um, or any movie, or any TV, uh, these visual images are impacting your pineal gland, which is the master gland of your body which has over 20,000 psychoactive chemicals in it, which are a 1,000 times stronger than anything on the street or in the plant kingdom or from the laboratory. And so by uh, looking at visual images, whether it's going through a beautiful uh, canyon with waterfalls and nature or down a a dilapidated, urban, blighted, uh, you know, ghetto, these images that we take in, um, they impact the chemicals in our body. And it's been proven now that within one minute of uh, a strong uh, download of an image, you have over 100,000 different chemical reactions in the body, which has over 72 trillion cells in it and many glands that do many things. So the control of the images that we take in through either our optic nerve or through our imagination is like the food we eat. You know, are you going to eat junk food? Are you going to have very pure, sacred, and holy food? I mean, whatever you eat, that's what you've got to digest. And if you take in these images of chaos and war and all these things, no matter how fancy they're wrapped up in, no matter what kind of fancy ribbons and sweet little packaging that comes with it, um, you're producing chemical reactions in the body that have to do with destruction being done for one reason or the other. It can be we have to kill them before they kill us. It can be, well, we have to chop down the rainforest so we can make some more palm oil and make more money. It can be uh, images of Christ coming in on the clouds or fairies dancing across the creek. It's not good or bad images. The issue we're talking about now is images, period, whether they're good or bad, impact us very powerfully. And so what I'm saying to everybody is this. If, if, and I'm saying it to myself. If we have an ounce of sense in our heads left, after all the brainwashing and trauma and mind control, let's be selective about the images that we allow into our minds, whether it's our own imaginations or whether it's uh, images in a magazine or images on a video screen. Let us be very, very selective about it. And I would like to do a little prayer right this minute because we are all one, and when one is harmed, it's all is harmed. I can be as selective as I want to be about the images I allow into my imagination, regardless of their source or how they got there. But if there's two blocks down the street, there's horrible images being downloaded into someone's pineal gland through imagination or any other means. It's harming me because our energy fields overlap. I mean, I remember 
back in the day when my husband, who has been deceased for 11 years, was working at the VA Medical uh, Center in Tuskegee, Alabama, running the post-traumatic stress disorder clinic, um, we heard so many of the combat veterans tell us these mystical, magical things that had happened to them in Nam, which is why they were sitting there in Tuskegee, Alabama, 20 years later. This was back in the 90s, mostly 80s and 90s, um, alive when most of their buddies didn't make it because they had these mystical experiences that happened, things that you wouldn't believe, that they didn't think anyone would believe. And we were very uh, blessed to hear it, not just from one or two guys, but from quite a few. And it was of these mystical powers that some of these monks had over there. You know, these I guess they were Buddhists mostly. There probably were different sects of Buddhism. But whatever it was, the religion they had over there, there were these monks. And some of them would go into meditation and send out peace because their country was at war. You know, villages were getting bombed. And so these monks would go and sit in a lotus or whatever they did, and they would meditate um, after years of study, years and years, in this lineage of initiations and everything, where they'd been living in these monasteries since they were kids. And they knew how to meditate. And, you know, if they were taking hallucinogenic substances, I have no idea. I'm not privy to that knowledge, but whatever it was, these dudes could go into meditation on peace and on compassion and on love. And I'm not making this up. And if you want to accuse me of making it up, be my guest. I would probably not believe it if somebody told me. But there would be these combat veterans, you know, um, out in the field in the thick of it, and suddenly this energy would come over them. They would lay down their hand grenades. They would lay down their guns. They would lay down, and they would just start walking off in the in the jungle. They'd just disappear into the jungle. And we were fortunate to know a few of them um, who came to the clinic. And what would happen is... They would get into this trance. Now, they were smoking pot over there. You know, I mean, you can reason it any way you want to. But whether they were or not, whatever was going on or whatever's not, the bottom line was they'd be out in the field, and this trance would come over them. And they would just lay down all their weapons and start walking in a direction. And usually within about 50 miles they would come across a monk meditating. And the monk would open his eyes and look at them and say, thank you for coming. Follow me. And it, there was a different story with each combat vet, but um, some of them would end up at like at a monastery and they would like go into the monastery and there would be these monks in there, and the monks would look at them with tears in their eyes, putting uh, sacred um, you know, prayer beads around their neck and saying, Oh, my brother, my brother, we knew you would return to us. You are a reincarnation. They had named some name of a monk that had been there, incarnation after incarnation. And so... This completely altered their reality, these combat veterans. And they didn't get killed, and some of them stayed over there for you know varying amounts of time, but eventually came back to the state and eventually ended up in our clinic. And it was just remarkable, the stories that we heard. And it seems like um, if you're in a peaceful mode... Um, you know, you're just washing your dishes and you're in a peaceful mode or you're out weeding your garden and you're in a peaceful mode or you're driving down the expressway and you're in a peaceful mode. That vibe is like a light frequency-wise and it goes out, and I don't know if this is, I don't know how general this is 
and any feedback is deeply appreciated, but around 50 miles radius. And the Bible hints at this when it says, one good man can save a city of 10,000, 10 can save the world. In other words, if there can be one person in bliss of any degree in an area, um, it's like subconsciously and superconsciously, everybody kind of vibes in on it, can kind of sense that there's somebody around who's not freaking out, who's not upset, who's not got stomach all in knots, you know, who's actually happy and actually peaceful and actually putting out love. And so I just wanted to pass that on right now because anyone listening to this, human or otherwise, um, earth person or galactic person, if your stomach is in knots, if you're uptight, if you're in battle mode, that's the issue. That needs to be healed so you can go into peace, go into calmness, get back in touch with your um, pure, clear essence that keeps you alive. That is your reason for existing and your purpose. And just let the other stuff go. Just let it go. You can do it, folks. I'm learning how to do it. I mean, you know, the the uh, mixed feelings you've had to your mother or your father or sister or brother or whoever, whatever, for 35 years. You can go into the feelings and you can praise, respect, thank, and love them. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Just uh, give them five or ten or fifteen minutes, whatever time they need, for you to focus on them and praise, respect, thank, and love. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I ask for the highest good of all concern. And in a little while, that will all be transformed and transmuted so you don't have to be in knots and can go into your divinity and be one of the um, broadcasters of peace. And the only way we can do that is to be at peace with our own selves. And I can guarantee you we're not. We're not at peace with ourselves. How could we be, having gone through all we've gone through? But we can get at peace with ourselves. That's where the battle is. This is a spiritual war. It's fought within each and every one of us. And when we are upset and our stomach is in knots, that's the work. And you just sit down and you go into that knot, you go into that stomach, you go into the fear and you just say, okay, I'm listening. I am listening to you feelings. And I'm going to sit here and listen until everything you have to tell me is heard. And I can already tell you feelings in advance that I love you and that I appreciate what your message is to me because it's going to teach me a lot. And just go ahead and let me feel you. And then the pain will come up. All the issues will come up. And it will be like taking a huge bowel movement where you're not fighting it. You're just relaxing and letting it come up. Now, as you do that, you're doing it to clear yourself so you can be a good vibe to everything. So, Mayor, that was my commentary. Um about the current that's event. Wonderful. Yeah, that is wonderful. Um I think that's just been something that we've all we just really haven't learned how to just flow with our feelings. And we have, you know, these these traumas that we've kind of stored up and forgotten about. So I'm really glad you're talking about feelings and um that we really can do this. And um as Cynthia said that um when really, really strong feelings are coming up or, you know, uh, instead of um, maybe doing something that could harm ourselves or, um, you know, harm one another or harm property, um, to just go ahead and ask to feel the feelings and thank them, respect them, um, just thanking them. And even um, doing the rapid eye movement, 
which is where you would look from one left side to the right side, back to left side, right side, left side, right side. And you can even do it with your eyes shut, moving the eyes back and forth or open. But that's another way to help the feelings and just say thank you, thank you, thank you as the feelings are coming up. So that has also been helping me. But again, you're talking about this today as just really helping me because um you know, sometimes I just forget to just feel the feelings and thank them instead of acting out on them. So uh, I know that is one of the things that really distinguishes us as human beings is that we do have intense emotions and we do feel things very intensely. So it, it is a great blessing. We're just learning how to work with it. And um, so that we don't harm ourselves or one another since we are so connected in the unified field. And, you know, we've talked about it before that um, it really is so important that we all find what makes us happy and choose to be happy um, because it not only affects ourselves, it does affect the whole unified field of creation. Um, so really, it is our responsibility to try to find that, what makes us happy and how we can share that and be that for everyone. Um, because as we're discovering, happiness is um, the cohesion that keeps us here and makes us want to be here. So um, it's just really important that we all discover our happiness and I'm I'm praying for happiness for all of us that um that this is something that we're just asking for everybody and um along with I'm praying that we all be enlightened that we all be um at one with our original uh divine being and that we can share this so anyway um I know there's some amazing things going on in the astrology um, as far as the full moon tomorrow, right, Cynthia? Yeah, full moon tomorrow. And um, this is a big deal and always is. Everything with the astrophysics is. Um, it's happening at uh, 6.57 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow. So almost 7 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern Daylight Time. And I do the charts for the base of the Appalachian Mountains because they are the oldest mountains in the world, and they're the only mountains formed on top of sugar quartz, which is piezoelectric, and it is said they are the spinal cord of the Earth. So we're reading this chart for the Kundalini Center, the base of the spine of the planet, And we are finding that the mystical path is the ability, is one degree Capricorn, which is the ability to uh, put all the mental chatter aside, all the emotional stuff aside, all the physical stuff aside, and just be. And from that state of being, to create causes to manifest in the world for yourself and everyone else. That's the mystical path. The sun is at the place of the music of the spheres. And there's huge amounts of uh, help from other uh, spheres and dimensions in this chart. It just goes on and on. Um, Other worlds extraplanetary power um there's this it's like a huge party is going on with uh with us and our brothers and sisters on other planes and dimensions and from other worlds and the part of fortune is faith What that means is the most important thing to do during this full moon is to have faith. Now, if you don't have faith, pray for it. It doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't cost you anything. And no one even has to know you're doing it. So you have no excuses. You just, 
You don't have to get on your knees. You don't have to call it God or Allah or Jesus. But just ask the all that is that sustains the universe to give you faith. And then the question might be, well, faith in what? And I would say faith that life is happy. Your life and others' life and the plant's life and the animal's and the world, that creation is happy. Now, that faith can take many forms, but I would say that would probably be the common denominator. Um, That having been said, what really excites me about this chart is the north node. The north node of any chart, the north node is where the moon sets. And the moon represents our soul, our emotional nature. And this chart as a collective. And the quantum field is uh, governed by emotion. In other words, um, you could have three people at the same event at the same time. And depending on their emotional state, they're going to have three different, entirely different experiences of that gathering. If one goes in there paranoid and fearful, He's going to have a different experience of the gathering than someone who goes in there full of love and faith who will have a completely different experience from someone who goes in there kind of distracted and confused. So whatever emotion it is that you would like for yourself and for the, uh, for others, call it love, Call it joy, call it happiness, call it grace and mercy, call it harmony. Whatever word you want to give to it or words, that's fine. But ask for faith in it. Ask for faith in it. And this is something personal between you and the one. It has nothing to do with your mother, your father, what other people think or don't think has nothing to do with anything you've been taught. This is something very personal between your heart as a child of God and the sustaining life that upholds all creation. You feel whatever emotion it is that you want to feel and you wish other people would feel. For example, a lot of little children would like to feel excited and enthusiastic And they wish that the people around them, instead of being bored and locked into this dull routine, could feel excited and enthusiastic too. So have faith in that. A lot of people just want to feel love. They want to feel acceptance and validation and support. Well, have faith in that. Whatever the emotion that you want to pull out of the quantum field for yourself and for the collective is ask for faith in that. That's the, the tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow evening-ish. We're having this full moon, and it's really important to have faith. And when you say faith in what I'm saying, have faith in what you want, in your heart, period. And it's very important to do that. Um It's just very important. But this north node of the moon is at the is is fifteen degrees Virgo. And the fifteenth degree every sign has thirty degrees, and the fifteenth degree of any of those signs is its most pure form. Because it's the furthest from the constellation before and the one afterwards is its most pure form. So the north node is at the place of the purity of Virgo. And guess what the purity of Virgo is? Mayor, should we tell them? <laughs> yes. Maybe we should make them wait. 15 we degrees. will just tantalize them <laughs> <laughs> and lead them on. Yes, uh-huh. it is. Do you want me to say it? Yep, 15 Virgo. It is Akirgi, the angels of commerce. Yes, indeed. Oh, can you hear me? 
Hello? Perfectly. Oh, good. My phone, if, if it runs out, I'll call back in on the other phone. I'm having some charging difficulties. But, yes, Akirgi, the Angels of Commerce, which I would be happy to read if you'd like me to. You read my mind. <laughs> and this is the north n- note, right? Yeah, this is the direction of the full moon tomorrow. In other words, there's all these things going on with the full moon that we could speak for, you know, God knows how many hours if we had to. But the bottom line is, okay, where is all this going? In any chart, the north node is where the whole chart is going. If you get readings by Carl Boudreau, who's probably one of the most incredible psycho- um astrologers on the planet um the only thing he'll read is your north node so we're reading the north node right now wow okay for tomorrow's full moon okay akirgi a-k-i-r-g-i the angels of commerce please be with us all beloved wisdom transformation faith comprehension of cause and effect true blessings grace and mercy, success and ingenuity in business and commerce are our expertise. When asked through the virtues of our name, we ensure that business success is attained through enlightened means, through strong faith, keen attention to inner guidance, understanding of cause and effect, and attunement to grace and mercy in all dealings. Over the centuries, we have inspired humanity from the most primitive skills to the wonders of the modern age. You may call on us for help in any business. The field of textiles and paper are a specialty. At this time, we are inspiring shifts in commerce to better facilitate the highest good of all. We encourage strong conscience so that blessings flow. For example, due to considerations that are economical, humane, and environmental in nature, we are inspiring legal, business, and manufacturing systems to use hemp plants for textiles, paper, food, fuel, sustainable agriculture, paints, medicines, and composite construction materials. This plant was designed by Universal Mind for uses both sacred and mundane and products manufactured from it are usually superior to those made from wood and other materials. When seeking help and ingenuity in any business, as you walk the path of enlightenment through service in the world, call on our help, and we assist you in wonderful ways. Akirgi, the Angels of Commerce. So what that tells us, with the full moon tomorrow evening, is this. The whole deal behind commerce is getting revamped. The whole deal. And all this stuff with the White Dragon Society and with the arrest and with the new bricks and the new banks and the Brexit, all these changes, known and unknown, seen or unseen, are as at this time in history... It's going to lead to new commerce, and the new commerce that it's going to lead to is what she just read, which is um, grace and mercy, clear inner guidance, enlightenment, and faith in all of our dealings. Not fear, not greed, not lust but faith and grace and mercy and clear inner guidance and the understanding that what goes around comes around, that we reap what we sow. And, you know, we're going to have another new moon in two weeks and two weeks after that another full moon. So this this is like a kaleidoscope. This is like a movie where you have Act 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're in the Act right now with the um, energies being broadcast through universal mind, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, 
to clean up our Commerce Act. And it will be done. You watch. Um, the the dominoes are falling. And well, the powers behind commerce are changing. Go ahead. Well, it's very exciting to see that our consciousness is evolving and that commerce, no longer will it be that we're um, – we're living almost to just to gain money or to serve money, so to speak. But rather, where commerce is um, evolving in such a way that that it's supporting our life and it's in harmony with our life, and that we're valuing our our oneness and our life and that the commerce is supporting that and that it's all part of that. And I just think that's such a beautiful evolution that we're taking now where it's not just to make money anymore, you know, just for the sake of that. And not only that, Mir, but listening to what the big player is in this full moon is Eris. Uh, there's a guy who wrote a whole book on a this small dwarf-like planet that they've discovered out there. And these planets are like radio stations. They emit frequencies that go into our bodies. And on, on a superconscious and or subconscious level, and affect us. I mean, yes, it's true, we're getting bombarded by smart meters and cell phone towers and all this stuff, but we're also being bombarded by the natural technology, which is what astronomy and astrology is. And Eris is stationing retrograde at this full moon, at the place of gnomes. Um, In other words, the intelligences of the Earth itself, the magma, the... um, the plates, the cratons, the um, the shifting plates of the Earth are going to throw in very surprising influences for this full moon. And because it's stationing retrograde, what's going to be happening, my prediction is, over the next period of time while it's retrograde, is we're going to realize that our states of consciousness are directly affecting the consciousness of the earth itself. And if you'll get the book, um, Revelations of the Ruby Crystal by Barbara Hanclow, uh, she documents how these satanic rituals have been done on very important ley lines of the planet, And they have been uh, done 24-7 for thousands of years to affect the earth to be destroyed. And it's like a cancer or it's like, you know, getting Lyme's disease or something. It's like this uh, disease that has been here on the planet. And when we can stop being afraid of the second dimension, and she explains what the second dimension is in the book. The second dimension is really the sexual energy, Um, but it doesn't have to be limited to sex. It's the ability to have pleasure in our body. In other words, um, the beauty of a good meal, the... uh, the bliss of a a great concert, Um, the headiness of the fragrant uh, garden with the roses blooming and perfume, Um, the softness of, you know, something soft that you touch that is so beautiful. It's the ability to download the majesty of God with the five senses. And one of the sneaky ways they've gotten us um, to be out of harmony is to say, wow, you cannot trust your five senses. 
Those are things of the flesh. God is in heaven. Give up the things of the flesh and seek ye God who is in heaven. And that's called schizophrenia. That's a dissociative state um, where we feel guilty about enjoying the pleasures of our body because then we're betraying God who is somewhere up there, subtle and invisible, that we have to earn the right to somehow sit at the feet. You know, this whole thing has been bred into us. And the truth of the matter is, is there's nothing but God. There is nothing but God. God is on and the present. Yeah. As you're as you're saying that, I'm I'm reminded again about um, when Jesus and and some of the other great beings have talked about miracles and how there's no order of difficulty in the miracles too. Right. And how so someone who maybe is very sick with an illness um, that can change in the blink of an eye. Um, with the focus, as you said, the focus on what it is we want to create and praying for that faith Mm -hmm. and asking, just asking for the healing, like we're asking for the enlightenment for everyone. And And so there really is nothing beyond the ability to be changed. Yes, and here's the deal. Whenever you ask for something for yourself, be sure that you absolutely ask for it for yourself. That's number one. But number two is ask for it for all others, too. Like if you, somebody hit star six. Oh, we're still hearing it. No, there it goes. Nope, somebody. Well, let's listen to what he's saying. Let's just listen. Oops, we lost. Uh, folks, this is Candy. Can you hear me? Yay! Candy! You're getting <laughs> hugged! Uh, what? <laughs> You've just been astrally hugged! <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome! <laughs> well, I, I got home two hours ago, and then some uh, some things happened that I didn't expect to happen, and so uh, that's the reason I'm late. And of course, you're hearing a little bit about the a Republican convention. There's, there's this uh, uh, black man coming out speaking for Trump, and and uh, it's just been a, a very interesting uh, this this evening. But uh, so I didn't know I was going to have my grandson overnight, and and all these other things. But I, you know, I, I can uh, share my uh, my treats now or. Uh, Later, but I wanted you to know that I was here and, and trying to be with my sisters. Wonderful, thank you, Cynthia. What do we want, Candy, to go ahead? Or? I want to hear the Candy Shop Show. <laughs> Come on, Candy. The Candy, Candy Shop show, show. The Candy Welcome. Shop Show. Oh, I want to hear the Candy Shop Show. Bring it on. <laughs> oh, you're sweet, sweet. Oh. Well, I just continue to be given opportunities to uh, uh, practice my spiritual treats, uh, you know, so I'm, uh, you know, opening the jar. And and, and twice on this trip, uh, my girlfriend and I, we got to talking, and I don't know, a napkin got thrown up on the dashboard, and suddenly we realized we were practically out of gasoline. (laughs) <laughs> wow, we were up in the mountain. We were in the Blue Mountains the first time it happened in Pennsylvania, and then we were in the Ozark Mountains today. And, and both times, I just, I just got still and quiet and set my intentions. Oh, bird tribe, come help fly us, fly us to the, the nearest uh, gas station. And, and I mean, it, we, we were just, just on two by the time we, we did get to one, and it was just. Uh, a thrilling testimony, you know, to, for me to see that. And, and uh, of course, I, I shared about uh, praying at the um, the UN, and, and and then and then I have, I, you know, you have to go to. to uh, I was staying near Philadelphia, and I prayed for Philadelphia and the 
and, 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 and the goals of the founding fathers. And, and then, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is off the beaten track. It's off of I-70. But for some reason, uh, my girlfriend was inspired that this time we would go see it. And wow, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is such a beautiful place. There are three major rivers that come to a point in the middle of the city. Uh, the Allegheny is one of them. And there are, in that county, over those three rivers, are 600 bridges. They are so beautiful. And, and it's such a mixture of, of blacks and whites. And now all these Indian uh, engineers are coming in and they're investing. And, 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 and there's this uh, resurgence to, to, you know, the... The steel workers, little tiny houses. So people are 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 are, are getting these fixer uppers for twenty thousand and and turning them into something beautiful. And and it's just a, a, was a, amazing. And we uh, my new friend took us on a tour all over Pittsburgh, you know, in the financial district. And so I got to pray for it. And and then. And then the next day, a, a long try from Pittsburgh to St. Louis and doing my prayer work and, you know, listening to the news. And, of course, there's all of this negativity stuff. And my girlfriend was with other people in New York City for a while, and they were all talking about, uh, you know, the disasters and the, 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 the martial law and, the, and, and, and uh, you know, things. And, 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 and I tried to explain to her, you know, that, that – it wasn't uh, it wasn't really going to happen that way as far as um uh big big things and so um uh of course i got to listen to benjamin fulford's july 15th uh message and and uh, uh about the Casarians and about the negotiations going on with the white dragon society and i saw a lot of details uh uh, one of the Rainbow Councils here sent me a, a list of the details that they're negotiating, and it's just really wonderful. And 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 the Rothschilds are fairly agreeable. The Rockefellers are not. Uh, so we've got all of this stuff going on in in Cleveland, Ohio. Of course, that was a long way from from Columbus, Ohio, where where I passed through on I seventy. Uh, but the it's kind of amazing that the governor of Ohio, and they always say whoever Ohio votes for is who wins, uh, but, but John Kasich is, is boycotting it. I think that Governor Mike Pence of, of Indiana is a fabulous choice, and the fact that he has been a congressman, but he wasn't an insider. He was there, but he was never accepted as an insider. He was on the Foreign Commission and, 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 and so he knows a lot about foreign affairs, and he ha- he came to a state that was just a mess in Indiana, and now it's got all of this surplus because he is a wonderful um, uh, leader. Mike Pence running as vice president with with Trump, and of course there's all this information about. Um, the, the two elections, and we've been hearing. Is there someone from, in the background? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Have, yeah, that was uh, that was the uh, um, okay. That was the speaker on, at, from the Republican oh, okay. convention. I was just double checking because uh, you know to see what was happening. But um, is it is it okay now? I hope Perfect. so. Perfect. Okay. Good. Good. Well, um, so. I just, uh, I think, I think that the schedule plan. Of course, the vote was tomorrow night for Trump to be the head, and I think that that the cabal wanted tonight uh, to cause riots. In, and but I think that uh, I think that the, uh, the, and they emptied their prisons because they thought they were going to arrest a thousand rioters tonight and that, and that there was going to be a huge thing so that that um, one of the Obama clones or something was going to declare uh martial law or or, or something and 
and and uh, I I don't know. We we certainly need to expand the law of one to Cleveland tonight and for the next four nights. That things uh, are very calm there. So uh, it's a, everybody's saying you know this is supposed to be the summer of crisis. Uh, let's call it the summer of change. Change for the wonderful things that the Galactic have in store for us. And I, I think that they can accomplish things in a peaceful way. Uh, big change. But it is going to be exciting if, you, if you've never listened to the news. I think, I think this is the week to listen to the news and what's going on in the world. And, and, uh, I, I just want to say that after I left Philadelphia, I I, I needed to uh, drive back into downtown New York City to see if uh, to get my girlfriend and my luggage, and 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 she didn't think I could do it. <laughs> but on Saturday morning, when the traffic wasn't too bad, this gal turned on her GPS and drove. Right over the the George Washington Bridge and through the the the, the Holland Tunnel and 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 down into Lower Manhattan and, and right there with all the yellow taxi cab drivers and so I did it without a scratch on my beautiful car and uh, so here I am very feeling very protected by by the Bird Tribe and all the galaxies <laughs> that I was talking to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so. wonderful, Candy. Oh, what tremendous experiences have you been having? It's just wonderful. And I would like to join with you in um just asking that um these the the disclosure and just that everything can come out easily and that those who have been causing harm um, have been on the the side of the cabal, um, the the parts of ourselves that have been warring with ourselves. Just that we can lay down our arms now and come into alignment, and that everyone can be respected, everyone can be understood. Because really, if you really look at the whole picture, um, everyone is uh, really everyone's been messed with one way or another. And so no one is really to blame. I think it's, as you said, it's really more about just healing. And so I would like to say the law of one that it can happen for everyone easily. And we're praying for grace and mercy for everyone, um, forgiveness, and that we can all just come back into alignment, that we're enlightened, that we see what happened, and that we forgive it, and that we're happy to learn from it and move on. And that's what we're asking for all the beings. We're asking on behalf of um, those that are in between space and time, those that are um, just observing and supporting. And on behalf of everyone, we're, we're saying the law of one again. We are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only the highest good of all happen, and I give thanks that this is done. So be it, and so it is. Thank you so much, Candy, for everything. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, you ladies. And so, putting the, the the lid back on the jar, I am going to have Mark Thorson return from Canada this uh, coming Wednesday on the Candy Shop Show. And as you know, he actually speaks the galactic languages, so we can hear. And that is so fascinating. And and I, what time is that show? What time? It's an hour later than this show. It's at eight thirty. And that is uh, Central Time, right? That's right. Perfect. That's right. And just so everybody would know, um, the callback number is, um, if you want to call in and listen to this show, the main number is 641-715-3813. 
And the PIN number is 883267-POUND. And this show tonight is four, number 464-POUND. And if you want to go to the blog spot, um, you can also listen on the YouTube channel. Um, the blog spot is diamonds with an S forever 31 dot blogspot dot com. Diamonds with an S forever 31 dot blogspot dot com. And um, Cynthia, are you there? Yeah, yeah. And I wanted what? to uh, cover where this, uh, the moon and the earth is because it'll put this more in perspective with the sun being at the music of the spheres. Is that okay? Yes, that is okay. wonderful. We the, would sun, love to. the sun is at the place of music of the spheres. It's at 28 Cancer. Now, Galactic Center is 27, 28 Sag. So this is directly aspecting the Galactic Center. The Earth and the Moon are conjunct at 28 Capricorn, which is acoustics. And I can read that, or Mary, you can read that, but we need to read acoustics, which is uh, 28 Capricorn. 28 Capricorn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, 28 degrees Capricorn, the angels of acoustics, Rosora, R-O-S-O-R-A. Please be with us all. Beloved, we are the overseers of acoustics in the physical world. We have inspired acoustic communication over far distances, from the drums of early peoples to modern radio, telephone, satellites, and other inventions in this field today. Every culture has stories of people hearing important messages out of thin air. We make sure this happens when it is vital for the highest good of all. By attuning to the virtue of wisdom and enlightenment in the alpha state, which is awareness of flowing feelings, within both self and others. We show you how everything to which you direct your attention can be heard over the greatest distances by clear audience. In addition to receiving sound, we show you how acoustic vibration can be transmitted, how spoken words can be intensified acoustically and materialized over distance. If a person reaches a certain degree of perfection in this, they can materialize sound so that even untrained people can hear distinctly transmitted spoken words with their physical ears. Small children who are flowing with powerful divine feelings often hear beautiful music when walking undisturbed in the woods or playing alone in a spot of sunlight or they will see and hear an invisible companion. Many times providence directs us to permeate a person's energy field with feelings of harmony, love, and power, making it possible for them to hear beautiful music of the spheres. This music entrains the consciousness in times of transformation. A person who is filled with beautiful feelings has a pleasing voice that makes beautiful sounds. Imagine a world enveloped in celestial music, for soon many will hear the music of heaven playing everywhere. Imagine ecstatic music continually strengthening, harmonizing, and uplifting you. And imagine feeling and thinking to an ancestor or distant loved one and actually hearing them feel and think back and seeing them too. Imagine seeing and dancing with an angel. Imagine. Each individualized being is a spark of divinity. Each person, a universe, 
expressing unique qualities of spirit, soul, or will, feeling. The fabric of the one being is made up of all universes woven together as the web of life or the cosmic ocean of love. This is the same in a human body where each cell is unique unto itself, but at the same time is a part of the whole, floating in a sea of water. Water is feeling. By merging with divine feelings, water takes on miraculous healing qualities. The water in the body becomes life-giving and miracles happen. Ability to encompass paradox, to comprehend each polarity as a single continuum, and in so doing, learn to be simultaneously a separate individual and one with all is the experience of whole being awareness. One sees all polarities with love and understanding. One is will, feeling, male, female, positive, negative, outward, inward, up, down, receiver, giver, fire, water, electric, magnetic, micro, macro, all at the same time. Every mystical skill depends on the ability to hold a split attention as meant by, I am in this world, but not of it. I and the Father are one. The middle path of Buddha, the razor's edge, the crack between the worlds, and God's love shines equally on all alike. This is the fifth dimension. This is putting equal attention on singularity and unity at the same time. This is what happens in the Tibetan exercise of paradox. One who comprehends and becomes paradox learns to love, knowing that love transforms all it touches and everything is a part of themselves. Encompassing polarities and all continuums at the same time with unconditional love is a skill of whole being awareness that allows one to follow the footsteps of great teachers. In understanding acoustics, one must comprehend flow and emotion, how to heal feelings and spiritualize them, the paradigm of selfhood shifts from being an isolated island to being at one with a vast sea of consciousness as a unified whole and a unified field. Each sound creates unique patterns of ripples on the emotional sea of life energy. Beautiful sound makes beautiful patterns. In the state of heaven on earth, Emotion and sound are congruent, following rhythms dictated by interior guidance in each moment, and thereby uniting individual with omnipotent will for the highest good of all. Then, power to awaken divinity in others is attained. Because the person to whom you are sending sound is part of the same fabric of energy, the unified field, and is actually one with you, vibrations of energy reach them just as ripples on a pond cover the entire surface from one pebble thrown. Vibrations are heard in the same part of the brain that processes emotion and sound. To the extent that you think feel, and sense your oneness with the person receiving it, the word gets through. They can experience it as an audible sensation. The key is proficiency with alpha states, the frequency range in which clear audience and emotions are experienced naturally. By honing feelings of union with the web of life, especially unity with a particular person, 
that distant person can hear and feel the word or words you are sending through a flow of feelings, which will then be translated into appropriate thoughts. If awareness is numbed through unresolved emotional pain from the past, vitality can be restored by becoming aware of subconscious wounds and letting them flow and change safely over time. Sound and music impel emotions, for they are of the water element. Sound and music are the language of emotion. As one's emotions tune to bliss and rapture, words and music become ever more beautiful. Emotions are carried on sound. Emotions are magnetic and attract new realities into form. As emotions and words and music reflect will for the highest good of all with unconditional love, earth appears as heaven. Rosora, the angels of acoustics. Thank you. Thank you. That is beautiful. Now, that, that the acoustic angels and the mer- music of the spheres are the major players. This is the full moon. It's sun opposite the moon, and the earth is conjunct the moon. Those are the big players. And this um, music of the spheres, I believe, is going to be really heavily beamed to us by beings from other planets, according to other things on this chart. Wow. Neptune is at the place of other worlds. And Uranus, by the way, it brings us back to the Earth. It is one degree away from Eris, which is Gnomes, and it is direct. At the very moment when Eris is stationing to go retrograde, Uranus is still direct at the place of herbs. And I want to read this herbs thing because... Um, You know, we've gone from buying our food at grocery stores, out of boxes, from restaurants. We're going to be going to more of a Ken's Domain, Isla, Anastasia orientation. So I wanted to read this because it's um, 26 Aries, which is, excuse me, 25 Aries, which is where Uranus is. Uranus is a major player right now because it's still in that square energy and a T-square going on with um, just major players here. So let me just read this real quick here. This is the Angels of Herbs, Euromas. Beloved, we are very powerful, heavenly host. We combine knowledge of the previous degrees of Aries, which is the will to love, so that miraculous skills in the preparation of herbs and roots for the purpose of healing and enlightenment are available to the children of light and love. We inspire, combining of plants and roots with the powers of divinity so that the natural healing qualities of the plants are greatly enhanced. This is done by feeling yourself one with everything and feeling yourself one with the divine that permeates all and flowing with strong emotions as you learn from the angels in Nadel, which is 25 Aries. This is 26, let's see, 24 Aries, excuse me. We inspire a person to charge the fluids and mixtures made from herbs and roots with divine feelings and emotions and visualizations. We inspire asking the beings of the earth element, the gnomes, to help in restructuring physical essences of herbs to embody the highest divine virtues. Each herb on earth has unique healing properties. We give guidance in choosing the right herbs with the appropriate properties for any situation that requires healing and enlightenment. We inspire the correct ways to prepare these herbs, whether into liquids or some other form. When herbs are prepared with awareness of the godly qualities, being everywhere present, permeating all, including the herbs, the herbs become extremely powerful, capable of changing a person's fate 
in a way that is the highest good of all on levels of being, mind, feeling, and even form. Remember that sound is powerful. When meditating on the letters of the ancient language, which represent divine virtues, and using these virtues to charge the herbs with greater powers, in addition to imagining that you hear the angel choir singing the notes, the music of the spheres, also sing the notes inwardly in your spirit or even out loud. If you sing inwardly, it enlivens the emotional realm. If you sing out loud, it also impregnates physical forms with these emotions. Inwardly and outwardly, sound penetrates space and changes whatever you direct it to. With the will, the visualization, the thought, the emotions, and the sensations of what you are imagining and focusing on. Whenever using any kind of herb for any reason, even if for a cup of tea, close your eyes and imagine the divine qualities of beauty, of joy, of happiness, of health, of enlightenment, of faith, whatever divine qualities you want in your consciousness, and imagine them impregnating the tea. Experience unity and know that these qualities are everywhere present and that they always permeate all time and space and will for the herb to take on these qualities with great power. Visualize the herb radiating power, beautiful colors of the divine states of awareness. Think of these divine states of awareness and get clear concepts of them and feel them emotionally. And then intone whatever sound you feel guided, inwardly or outwardly, and imagine the sensation of these divine virtues manifesting. Ask the beings of earth, the gnomes, to restructure any plants in your environment so that divine qualities are enhanced and perfectly embodied within them. Experience the powerful healing that this creates. As occasions occur, meditate on, expand, and incorporate the amazing powers and blessings available with the healing properties of herbs. So, um, if you think in terms that the North Node is commerce, and that a whole lot of commerce has to do with commodities and with food and with medicines, um, this is going to play off that north note. In other words, there's going to be increasing interest in bringing to market in a divine way, with grace and mercy, um, products such as herbs and Mm -hmm. plants that have amazing healing qualities that have been enhanced through high states of awareness. And this download that Cobra's talking about, where he's talking about, I think maybe it was Benjamin Fulford, I think it was Cobra, but he said that the sun was about to burp. And that is because there's alignments taking place astronomically that are going to increase the gamma ray burst. It's going to penetrate everything on Earth. It's going to affect our DNA. And I think, and I could be wrong, but my interpretation of it is going to be like we all start tripping on the very best LSD and have a wonderful trip that never ends. Because certain things are going to get activated in our DNA, which are going to put us into higher consciousness. Now, higher consciousness includes the mind, but is not limited to it. It also includes our emotions. And all this dead pan stuff we've ever had to put up with, going to work and watching the media and going to school and planes flying overhead and just this da 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 mm-hmm. you know one mm-hmm. war after the other this this that and that um that's going to totally transmute in the twinkling of an eye and we're going to be in a state of rejoicing so back to you mir what what was that uh constellation the angels of the earth 25 um let's see let me turn my light back on. When it's late at night, I like to keep it dim, and I just turn the light on to read. That is 25 Aries. 25 Aries. Okay. Yeah. It's just real interesting how sound and from the music of the spheres 
um, we're just hearing that as we ask to align our will and our being with the highest good of all, um, we set into motion, and as we ask this for everyone, we set into motion this opening and expansion of our consciousness that is just going to, you know, it's amazing how the sound and I was even thinking of each one of us, because you had talked earlier, Cynthia, about how um, it takes a very small number of people to really focus yeah. um, with their whole being on um, bringing heaven to earth and visualizing it, creating it, and, and it will be. And we see how these ripples affect from each one of us. So if we all just at some point could send out uh, vibrations, thoughts, visualizations of just I love you to the earth, to everybody on the earth, to, you know, all the different kingdoms, the plant kingdom, the herb kingdom, the tree kingdom, the mineral kingdom and rock kingdom and the earth herself the beings on the earth and within the earth, the humans, all the animals, the four-legged, the, all the sea creatures and the waters and the air, and just send out or even just sing a little song of I love you um, and just send it out. And the same thing goes that as we were reading about the angels of acoustics um, and working with the polarities, within us we have all these polarities. We have the the fierce anger and um, destruction as well as just the purity of all the divine ideas and, and being and essence and divine mind, we have it all. So when we come upon those real dark feelings and intense feelings, um, what we're learning is just to stay with them, thank them, and ride them out. And actually, even as we're in them, if we can, just ask them to even increase. Thank them and ask them to even increase more so that we really can allow them to just flood on through and transmute into their highest good. So the other thing is just giving thanks, even if it's the worst thing we thought we'd ever be going through to just give thanks for all things because we're learning that all things work for good and that is part of this understanding of the polarization that we are all things. And so we're just coming into harmony and I'm just asking the angels of acoustics to help us tune it up according to the highest good of all. Back to you, Cynthia. Yeah, I got my flute out today, and um, I'm I'm making an intention to practice it more. I've got a few other little instruments I can use from time to time, but to get used to playing it. Because I've noticed uh, in the evening, if somebody in the neighborhood uh, plays a harmonica or starts singing or plays a flute, or even if they've got um, like a ghetto bluster on, if they're playing something pretty, it really blesses the whole neighborhood. It's just magical. Even if it's just the July bugs and the occasional owl hooting, um, it's beautiful. The sound is beautiful. And we will be moving into um, sound that, I mean, so much of the sound we've been hearing, such as planes going overhead, um, you know, radios, um rap uh just even gospel music i mean there's been some that's very beautiful there's been a lot that's just kind of filling up the space but the music we're going into um is transcendent and it's because it's expressing the divinity in whoever is making it whether it's a simple flute or a simple little song or whether somebody on a synthesizer or with more elaborate equipment, maybe a piano, what have you, is just, you know, letting it all out. Um, more and more we're going to hear music in the physical that evokes in us a sense of peace and of gratitude and love. And I'm I'm going to practice more. I'm going to, um, when I hear my neighborhood kind of quiet, 
I'm just going to bring my flute out and play a little while as my gift to the neighborhood. So that's my little comment, Mayor. That's beautiful. Yeah. And you know what? We we all have, um, uh, by God's grace, you know, some people cannot speak, but um, many people can speak, and and um, everyone has a unique voice, and our voice is constantly changing and shifting. Um, so it's a miracle um, just to be able to to speak and and what I'm thinking is that as we can use our voice to tone um, it's called sounding and um, it's a way to actually support and move emotion too so we can ask the angels of acoustics and sound and emotional healing to be with us as we do that but all you really need to do is take a deep breath and let the sound out. Um, a lot of people talk about singing in the shower. You can do it in the shower. Um, if, even if you're feeling heavy from, um, you know, having to cope with the the day-to-day uh, rhythms of working a full-time job or whatever it is that we have to cope with, um, using the sound to kind of release the energy in combination with, say, moving your body um, can really help. So an example of that would be just to take a deep breath and let the sound out, like, oh, and just letting the sound move. And then taking that sound and asking as as the painful emotions and the stress comes off with the movement and the sound, then moving into more get, using your sound as a gift and singing. Like Cynthia was saying, she might just get out her flute and play for the neighbors or the plants. Um, just using your voice um, and making sounds. You know, um, as we're studying... Um, the true teachings of the Kabbalah by Franz Barden and learning in the angel messages by the names of the angels in the cosmic language of the alphabet, we're learning that each letter has a musical note associated with it and a divine virtue associated with it. So as we sound and um, work with these frequencies of sound, we're expressing the divine virtues. So it's just really something how we can do that for one another. And um, that's just amazing. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Come on in, star uh, six. Are you still there, Cynthia? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for this Ben Fulford report to come out. Oh, my goodness. As soon as this call is over, I'm going to go down and check. But I really don't expect it till tomorrow morning, but we'll see. He's surprised okay. me many times before. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just exciting. We're at a really exciting time. And I think the main thing is, is for people to be... Um, kind and calm and patient with themselves, be forgiving, give yourself a lot of slack and one another a lot of slack because we're still in this time of chaos. We're still in between everything. And um, it's just be real forgiving. That's what we're learning. Hi, this is Sunny. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready before I had to come in and unmute and get my phone. But, oh, um, great! Yeah, um, I was just really inspired by all this talk about music and sound and and everything. And everything you talk about inspires me really. <laughs> but because um, tomorrow on my show, um, Voices of the Alternative World, is the focus is on music, and wow. I was just. You know, I was wondering what I was going to, you know, I don't have a guest. I don't want the shows to be too alike. But but what you talked about tonight was a real inspiration for me, that knowing that this is part of 
just what's going on right now in the energies. Wonderful. It like, like it's always appropriate, but yeah, I just wanted to say just. So. What time is your show tomorrow, Sunny? Well, it's um, Pacific time. It's five thirty. You know that, like all okay. the other shows except for Candies. Okay. So great. Yeah, and uh, you know there's been so much chaos and bad news out there, and having to balance all the, you know, all the violence that's been going on and everything. But I know. I, I really it's don't. really it really is still the time of chaos that we're in, and I know yeah. Cynthia has taught um, that from her shamanic teachings, she's learned that in the time of chaos, the best thing we can do is the unconditional giveaway of beauty, in mm. whatever form it could be, just a, a thought, it could be a musical tone, it could be a color. It could be a smile, it could be a hug, it could be a good wish, you know, but whatever you could do, it could be creating some beautiful work of art, um, it could just be a good wish for the highest good, you know, and the law of one, but it's unconditional giveaway of beauty. So it does give us something to do instead of just him and ha about being in the chaos <laughs> right. That's yeah, what well, I love I, about it. It gives us I something that. creative, like yeah. a challenge. Hmm, how can I give something beautiful in this moment? You know. <laughs> well, I that yeah. I mean, that's been in my awareness, and when I'm on Facebook, I try to post things that that either are beautiful or show show some good news about things that are going on in the world, mm. even relative to the the bad stuff, you know, when, when cops and black people get together and, you know, find some harmony and common ground and, you know, I mean, it's real bad in some areas, but once in a while I see this happening, you know, there was a post about the, a certain group of Black Lives Matter coming together with police and having a barbecue with them. I don't know where, I don't oh, remember where I love it was. It. But, yeah, it was probably a small group. Of, yeah, but yeah, that's what um, I like to focus on. I like to put out put out messages like that to get people to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it! It's wonderful. Good. <laughs> right. Thank so you yeah, so much, Sunny. Well, thank you. Gosh, you're you're such a you give you give a lot. I mean, all of you, but you know, Cynthia, your teachings and all are just very um, rewarding to me. You know, they really stay with me, and they really I really resonate with the things you talk about very much. Mm. I'd Thank say that. you, Sunny. Yeah, it means a lot. Well, it, it means a lot to me. <laughs> and it's just so wonderful. We're all um, connected. Um, just you know, thinking that you're right there in California right now and we're we're just sending those frequencies all the way around mm-hmm. this whole planet. Oh yes. Yes. It's just amazing. And how the galactics are supporting all of us and that's just amazing. Well, really it's like you said about sending out the one person with a peaceful vibe that just goes out and resonates and 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 I was telling my caregiver who was here, he was talking about animals that attack other animals and things like that. I said, well, I've got fox here, I've got cats, and sometimes raccoons, and they all seem to get along, you know. Wow. And, and, I, and I always try to put out the vibe that, that all these animals are going to get along and be harmonious and aren't going to kill each other, you know. That, that, I mean, mm. they're kind of animals, but... But still, they're kind of a little community out there, and they <laughs> love you. <Yeah. know. laughs> so that's what I like to see. I like to demonstrate that when people talk about how bad these animals are and what they do. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, they were they were created to be carnivores, but on the other hand, they can they can be friend, you know, friends with certain other ones as well. Yeah. And, and so that's what I, you know, I have a cat that's lived outside here for 11 years amongst all the wild animals, and he's surviving. 
and wow. it's surviving, surviving very well. He looks really wow. good. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. amazing. That's amazing. So, it really is showing how with the consciousness we can all, we really can all live together. Yes, and you know, I often the issue of carnivorous animals, and, you know, that's been something I've thought about a lot. You know, they show pictures of them pairing. You know, I mean, they they attack and they bring down, and it looks very violent, you know, but will there come a time on this planet when animals will not be that way anymore? I mean, the animals will all live together in peace, and, I mean, there'll be maybe... The little lions and all these kind of, you know, carnivorous animals wind up living on plants at, at that time. I know it's some wow. question that, that I've that I've, you know, had in my mind for a while. You know, how, Interesting. Yeah. Well, wow. So yes, the peaceable kingdom. You know, the pictures mm-hmm. of uh, those animals together. Wow. I know you see those cool pictures where a baby animal of one totally different species will be raised mm-hmm. by others and survive. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yes, I've I've seen that. You know, I've seen pictures of cats with little baby chicks sitting on their heads. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen pictures like that on Facebook, and hopefully they're real. <laughs> You know, or a little baby rabbit or something, you know. <laughs> I love cats. You know, I don't I don't like when they bring in the make a bloody mess inside, but you know <laughs> but they're so sweet too, you know, they can be so sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well. I think the important thing is to recognize that we're realizing that everything and everyone is important. Mm-hmm. And that no matter what state they're in or what they've been expressing. I mean, even if it's the person who's been causing the most harm of all, they are a beautiful part of creation also. Mm -hmm. And they need to be honored and loved and respected and given the opportunity to come in alignment. And I just think it's Mm -hmm. recognizing that we're all, you know, you know how it it keeps saying in the, the messages, angel messages, that God's, shines equally on the dark and the light, on, on the east and the west, on all of it. Hey, and guys. So, yep. Hey, welcome. <laughs> you guys hey. want to hear a full story? You want to hear a full story goes with the whole talk tonight? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Fasten your seatbelts. I'll just tell a little version. I want to tell the whole story of my fun July. Okay, so I, w- I decided to to go to the fair. I'll leave all that out. But last night I was at the last night of the fair and I bought the demolition derby ticket for $12, right? You know what a demolition derby is? What is it? I do. I I see your pictures on Facebook. I wonder, (laughs) what is she doing? (laughs) I don't know what the heck I'm doing, what the heaven I'm doing. I'm being a fool. (laughs) Wait till you hear the story. A demolition derby is they have certain classes. They have three or four or five races at the fair and they have cars that are beat up and they take the windows out of them and and people register them to go into a muddy field while the audience is watching and they bash into each other like bumper cars with real cars you know and and it, you don't get the the rule is you can't hit the driver's seat door and nobody gets very harmed but okay so I went to the demolition derby last night and every day I've been going to the fair being doing something different, being happy and joyful in the audience. I just can talk to, I was by myself, so I can talk to anybody. So I was talking to the people around me and, you know, I was talking about joy. I was planting seeds, what I was doing. Went to get uh, an icy or something and I saw a gate that said pit pass passes. I told the lady, I want a pit pass. Well, do you have anybody driving here? I said, no. And I said, I'm just teasing. So I got something to eat, went back and sat down. And I was talking to everybody around me, the guys in the back, two, a couple in the back of me, uh, their son was going to drive in one of the races, and there was two families around me. And uh, so I said, hey, guys, what is that guy selling tickets there for? I wonder why. I don't know. I was just being curious. And so I said, hey, they said, hey, there's that guy. You're wondering what he's selling tickets for. Ask him. 
I said, okay, what are you selling tickets for? He goes, well, if you buy a $10 raffle ticket, you get be put in the drawing to drive one of the demolition derby cars, of the 14, 14 cars. I said, really? He, and they do this all the time at the fair. People that want to drive one of the cars, <laughs> put their, you know, buy a $10 ticket and a raffle, and if you get drawn, you get to buy one of the cars, right? And so, and, and I looked at the people and said, should I do that? Yeah, yeah, do it, do it. You know, by now, I'm, even though I got a year younger on my birthday, I was supposed to be 53, and I was 52 all year, so I'm 51 this year. I, you know, I kind of felt a little bit of emotions, like, uh, but, you know, I got a kid at heart. I said, okay, I'll buy a raffle ticket. And so came the drawing, fourth name. Guess who got drawn? <laughs> Elizabeth. And they go, there's your name. I said, oh, my God. Wow. And, you know, you don't, some, one person put $100 in and he didn't get drawn. <gasps> wow. So I went down and, and mud splashes. Yeah. And so the, the 14 cars for the amateur race, you know, the people that get drawn, they're donated by a company and they have them all there. And they got, they were all painted black. There was 15 and they had numbers on them. The little boy, so my name got drawn, and the little boy goes, you got to pick that eight car. Before my name got drawn even, he said, you got to pick that eight car. I said, okay, I will. And his dad was said, hey, I drove in the Derby eight times at one of these. And he so he was like a coach. He told me all these pointers <laughs> before he even got my name drawn, before my name was even drawn. So we were like generating. I've seen afterwards we're generating feelings of what happened at the end. And so, okay. So then I commented to them, you know, I I have this, when I talk to people, I teach them joy and being happy and all this and taking action in it. So I guess I better take the action if I tell everybody else to take the action. <laughs> so <clears throat> so I go down to the pit and they there's people, the other drivers donate the helmets and the thing and they tell you not to put your thumbs in the wheel because your thumbs can get broken off if Sony bumps in, you know, bumps drives into you front face, whatever anyway so and there's two young girls that are going to take pictures for me and i uh, uh might hold my purse and i couldn't wear my glasses because oh. glasses because mud splits it's on you and you can't see <laughs> so i decided not to wear my glasses with this big helmet <laughs> and this was oh, the last God. race all the lights were on right there's <laughs> and it ended up uh 12 people got drawn, or 14 people got drawn, only 12 showed up, and the one car didn't start, so they gave them a free fare pass for next year and uh, to ride in that derby. So, demolition derby, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I went over to the side, and I said, okay, guys, you got to help me. There is no way. <laughs> oh, you got to give me, I'm calling in all the experts at the drive car callers. I'm calling in all my galactic friends and the angels and anybody can help me you guys didn't help me and i went back and forth to the audience several times because it was like two hours before we got to race and there was people in the audience i said how did you know i, was, I heard you over there and some guy with a headband and didn't even fit into the audience i swear there was angels there he shook my hand he took my hand and another guy took my hand like gave me maybe energy i don't know i was just imagining that but anyway okay so i asked that i did the law of one and for all races and <laughs> So I, I just said, okay, I'm not going to worry about it for this. Phone for cars. <laughs> and I'm just at peace. I was at this surreal peace. So I went in there. They introduced me as Elizabeth Diamond. Elizabeth Mulligan goes by Elizabeth Diamond. All the cars as they drive in this pit with the mud, right? I just go, you floor it. Floor it. And, you know, and it's like, oh, my God, before I knew it, I said there was no cars moving. I, I saw a couple, and I bashed in really good at some. I just kept going, hear me, hear me. Somebody bashed into me. We had to stop a couple times because there was a fire in the car. They put it out. And then my car, thank God we stopped the second time for two minutes. My car was, somebody hit me in the front end. It burrowing smoke. I couldn't even see the bump in anybody. And so that died down, but my engine was running. Everybody else wasn't. I was like burrowing around there. And then some cars, you're still in there. Your stick doesn't get broken, and, and, and but you're stuck. So you got two minutes to get unstuck. And then you're done. So I couldn't find who was, the stick was up. And I heard the announcer say number three, car number three and eight, 14 and three and eight were the last ones. Remember that, guys. So I, I heard him say 14 is done. And I heard him say three. I said, oh, I got to find three. And I found three and I bashed into him. He was, he couldn't drive around. He was so, so. And so then I guess I won the race. It's like, oh, my God. 
I won the race. A fifth three-year-old. They were like young guys. They were all guys. I was the only woman. There's one 67-year-old wow. for 30 or 40. I was like, oh, my God, I really did it. I said, oh, my God. I got out of the car, sat on the door, and waved. We were going, yeah! <laughs> God like, won the oh. race. And I had so much confidence. The first hit on the first car, I was like, oh, my God, this is fun. I'm going to keep going right here. By the end, my uh, driver's, uh, the, the steering wheel was hard, too, because my muscles were really tense, but I think the some of the – Power steering got knocked out of my car, but I was the only car that drove off the field, too. All the others had to get towed because they weren't running. <laughs> and I won a great big trophy and five hundred dollars. So that doesn't matter. Oh but my! Oh God. my! Something Congratulations. I didn't even plan, and I something I didn't even plan, and I was just teasing a lady. I want a pit pass. Little did I know I was gonna. Oh my God! Right? Weird. Isn't that amazing? Wow! But I'm just saying, when you're in these feelings, I wanted to bring that story. And then it, it was a pro- prophetic to me because I was car number eight. That's in infinity, and and it's kind of like a completion in us. And, you know, the eight unravels to a zero, which is a circle, unity. And I crashed into the three, which is completeness, wholeness. The eight crashed into the three, and then the 14, these are the last three cars, four and five is four and one is five. So five is grace, three is you know, Christ, consciousness, eight is us. That's how I saw it. And, uh, <laughs> there, there's my little story. But I want to encourage everybody. Just, I decided I'm going to just have fun this week. I don't want to go very far. And I saw the fair. So, anyway, that's what oh, happens, you guys. Oh, that brave so woman. Wonderful. Brave woman. That is so wonderful. Oh, that somehow just says, it's like a sign that we're on track. Things are on track. It's wonderful. Well, Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Let me add this to you guys, because when you pray the prayer on the highest good of all concern and you have faith, if you be, and you disbelieve or have faith, just be a fool and have faith that you believe that prayer is true. It's set, everything's set at the highest good of all concern. So I pray that my life be, you know, I, did, I pray the law won a lot when things come up. So my life set at the highest good of all concern. I was planning a trip with my daughter and grandkids, going to go somewhere fun, maybe Mount Rushmore in July. That trip all got topsy turvy. It, it, it turned into a trip with my sister and my daughter, and grandma's going to follow them. And I'm the one that started to plan the trip in the first place. But that trip was followed up for a reason, the highest good of all, so I could decide to go to the fair. <laughs> and generate, uh, you know, I, I did different things I don't want to tell now, but to generate fun and happiness to show myself that, yes, when you truly do things every day in the now moment, if you, if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't, don't do it, even if it's paying a bill. I know, it sounds mm-hmm. radical. But I'm mm-hmm. telling you, <laughs> it really drives something in your life. It just exactly the whole call you guys talked about. Yes, thank you. Thank you, and I'm I'm just asking that everyone can feel good. Um, we really we're asking for love miracles and miraculous rescue for everybody right now. So we're asking that the law of one be said for everyone continuously at all times, um, and that we all just naturally and easily um, come into that alignment like you did, Elizabeth. So. Um, Thank you so much so, for sharing that. I just want to say it's, it was called the Smash, the Sherbert County Fair Smash and Crash Demolition Derby. <laughs> so what happened prophetically, Diamond's Energy, Love Conquers All, went in to a fair, which is uh, fun in the air, fair, which is fun, <laughs> generates the energy of fun in the air. Diamond's Network Energy, which is what we're generating, because we're all generators, and they went in, went into the demolition derby, and uh, and uh, somehow we brought in the diamonds, or we brought into the world an eight, a three, and a fourteen, with the eight surviving. Wow. Whatever that means, I mean, I try to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it was absolutely. it was the date was seven seven two thousand sixteen. It was seven 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 seventeen two thousand sixteen. Well, there's seven, seven, seven because and seven, and then the seventeen is, is a seven. seven. 
And one is yeah. six is a seven. And then it's seven, eight, seven, because the seven and one, the one and seven is an eight. So seven, eight. Yeah. And that was the number of my car, eight. And I didn't know that. The little boy, I just went on faith that the little boy was speaking <laughs> a prophecy to get the eight. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, but here's you, the God. full thing, you guys. Be a child because everybody, the guy that sold me the ticket probably thought, oh, my God. Not not oh, my God, but and everybody that saw me standing down there, one woman and all the men, you can't see the numbers. So the guys didn't favor me or nobody favored anybody because you can't see who's in the car when you're racing. But um, it, uh, what was I going to say? Anyway, it, it, it That's was wonderful. It, oh. A 53-year-old, 51 now. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine it. So if I can do it, you guys can be fooled, too. Love you. Love you. Thank you, Elizabeth. That is so beautiful. And just wanted to remind everyone, um, there is something amazing that happens when we give thanks, even for um, really difficult things we're going through. Um, for the feelings. That's why sometimes when these intense, awful feelings come up, just saying thank you, thank you, thank you as a mantra to allow them to keep coming so that they can be released out of the body tissues and um, transmute. So um, just reminding everyone that in those moments of um, just when you're not sure what to do or what to think, that a good fallback is always just to give thanks. You know, just give thanks in the moment for um, the plants outside or the the bugs that you hear, the choirs of the insects outside at night or um, the kitties and the raccoons we were talking about earlier. Um, Just whatever you think of, just to give thanks for it. We give thanks for the difficult things and we're giving thanks for the things that really inspire us and bring us love. So, Cynthia, are you still there? Do you have any words of wisdom to share with us? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I just want to wish everybody a beautiful full moon tomorrow. And the full moon is a very powerful time um, for putting out thanks because what we planted two weeks prior at the new moon ripens at the full moon. So even if on a conscious level uh, there's lots of things you're not thankful for and you can't think of anything to give thanks for, my suggestion would be to give thanks that you don't have anything to give thanks for. And that seems weird and it seems crazy, but subconsciously what you're doing is, is you are commanding your subconscious mind to again look at what's happened in the last few weeks and to find what has gone right. For example, we're still breathing. We're still here. Um, You know, wonderful, exciting things are happening in the world. Um, We are having a lovely summer. And just if you can think of wonderful things or mediocre things that you can give thanks for, all the better. But just the fact of giving thanks alone it uh, changes the body chemistry. It uh, gets the glands to secrete uh, differently than if you don't. So whether you can consciously think of something to give thanks for or you're just doing it on principle, it's a very, very powerful thing to do to give thanks. I, I use it all the time. It's kind of like stopping the war. It's like laying down the arms somehow. And and I could see where it would change the composition of um, the energetic frequency by just giving thanks, even if giving thanks for such horrors that we've been through because, you know, ultimately we're all going to learn from all of this. And even the worst of the horrors that were that we have caused personally or or one of us has we're, we've learned from it all and um, we've had amazing galactics come in and share with us um, some of their wisdom from things that they've learned and their compassion for us as we're learning them um, 
And so just to give thanks for all of it somehow stops the warring, like you're saying, Cynthia. It shifts the um, energetic frequency of what we're going through. And instead of fighting it, we're just going to give thanks for it and know that all things are working for good and that whatever's going on right now, we're going to learn from it and we're, are, we are going to have faith that we're going to get through it and in a way that's the highest good. So thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank you too, Mira, and thank you, Sunny, and thank you, Elizabeth. And all you people out there listening now or later, we really are all one. And when one of us is harmed, we all are affected by it. So love yourself, uh, be kind to yourself, because when one is helped, all are helped. And if you are the one helping you, you're affecting the whole being of God in a positive manner. So I want to encourage everybody to take that hot bath, go for that long walk, read that book you've been meaning to read. Have healthy boundaries. If people are dependent on you, give them the honor of believing in their God self, that they can be strong in their own self and they don't have to be dependent on you or anyone. And just start uh, healthy boundaries of taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and set a good example for all others to do the same. Because whether we take care of ourselves, um, we're helping the whole being of God, or whether we're taking care of others, we're helping the whole being of God. The whole idea is happiness. And our number one responsibility is ourselves. So it's our job to be happy, and if we're happy, it automatically helps everybody else. So be happy, everybody. Should be an interesting week. <laughs> That's wonderful. It reminds me of um, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs when they're whistling while they work. You know, give a whistle while you work. You know, so let's all just find something that we can be happy about in in our days, in our moments, and. Um, even if it's, we're just giving thanks because things are rough right now, but we know we're learning from them, we're just going to just keep evolving. And um, I think we're doing a wonderful job. And um, I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight. And um, we just give thanks out to the whole universe and wishing everyone a very beautiful night. And maybe we will close with the law of one. <clears throat> so we give thanks. We call in the living flame of divine love to be with us now and universal consciousness to be with us now and our own divine Christ itself to align with us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And we're giving thanks to the whole creation. We're praying for um, enlightenment for everybody. Uh, because we are all one. And when one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am and who we are, and I and we are one with all there is, I ask that the highest good of all happen. And I give thanks that this is done. So be it, and so it is. So in it is. full faith. In full faith. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mayor. Thank you. Good night, Good night everybody. Looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. 
Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.